You can ask question in English or in Bahasa Indonesia. Okay, thank you. I will try in English. Okay. Good evening, Dr. Jakir Naik. Mm -hmm. I, I would not, I will not declare myself as a non-Muslim or a Muslim because I'm on my way to convince myself. But I was born in Muslim, that's why it is uh, Muslim in my ID, but uh, when I was eight years old, my father forced me to to be baptized. So I now I don't know uh, what I really am. Am I a Muslim or a Christian? Okay, now um, my question is that was uh, that was my first question. Am I a Christian or a Muslim? Because um, I never go to church actually. Okay, maybe once a year, or I never do um, salat also. I never do that. <clears throat> and now I'm questioning about the creation. Uh, the creation of everything, the human, the humankind, the universe. Why did God create us? What is the main purpose? I need to know that to convince myself. Thank you. Sister has a question that she was born in a Muslim family. I assume that the mother was a Muslim, but the father forced her to get baptized at the age of eight. And this is not the first time I'm hearing I've been in Indonesia for the last several days. And I've heard it many times from the questioner saying that I've been forced by my father to become a Christian. I'm wondering what is the law of Indonesia doing? You know, in the country where I come from, India, we are a minority. Muslims are a minority. The government says about 14%, I say we are 20%. And if anyone forces anyone to convert, he's put behind bars, arrested. This is not a minority country, majority, 88% I'm told. In Malaysia, the Muslims are 61%. Islam is the state religion. Leave aside convert if anyone does dawa to a Muslim. Anyone does dawa to a Muslim, he'll be arrested. Only 61% Muslims in Malaysia. And Malaysia is just, you know, the neighboring country of Indonesia. Only 61% Muslims and it's illegal to do dawa to a Muslim. This Indonesia, largest country in the world which has the maximum number of Muslims out of 260 million, 220 million. It is a shame on you. 22 million and the remaining 40 million they are forcing you to convert the balance 12 percent is forcing you and you are doing nothing sitting on your backside shame on you what power allah gave you born here you have the voting power right or wrong what's happened to the muslims of indonesia I know several years back I was told that the practice is less, but now since I have been here for the last several days, I have realized that there is a spark among the youngsters. I see that there is a wave of Muslims coming close to Quran and Sunnah. And I see that wave even here in the University of Darussalam, Gontor. 
I am not telling you to fight the non-Muslims. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Mumtahina, chapter number 60, verse number 8, Allah forbids you from being unjust towards the unbeliever if they drive you not off your if they drive you not out of your home and fight you not a religion. But the next verse says in Surah Mumtahina, chapter number 60, verse number 9. But if the unbeliever fights you against your faith and drive you out of your home, Allah forbids you from being kind to them. Generally, Muslims should be kind to the non-Muslim. Help them. Take care of them. Protect them when required. But if the non-Muslim fights you against your religion and drives you out of your home, Allah forbids you. Muslims are sitting on the backside doing nothing. Such a large population, Allah forbids you from being kind to them. Every lecture I've given, I've heard a few people say, I've been forced to leave my religion Islam. Maybe Allah had his planning to send me at this time. And I was told by some people of Indonesia, Brother Zakir, you know, Indonesia is a different country. You know, only talk, be careful while talking. What careful? I am here to preach about the Quran. I am here to preach about the Quran in a country which has the largest population of Muslims. And if I do not do that, Allah will take away my speech from me. In most of the countries in the world, if you go and complain to the police that someone is forcing me to change my religion, he'll be put behind bars. Most of the countries in the world, whether Muslim or non-Muslim. I would request the Muslims of Indonesia. You are the followers of the best religion in the world. Allah calls you the Khaira Ummah in Surah Imran chapter 3 verse 110. Kuntum Khaira Ummah tiru khrijat linnas. Oi Muslims, ye are the people evolved for mankind. Calling you the Khaira Ummah. Allah is giving an honor. There is no honor without responsibility. There is no honor without responsibility. Allah says about the responsibility and continues. Because we enjoy what is good and forbid what is wrong and believe in Allah. The sister asked the question that she was forced by the father. And she was baptized at the age of eight. She doesn't know. She's confused. And she's asking what should be done. Sister, I would like to ask you that. Okay. Sorry, you have something to add to it? Yeah, can you repeat the question? Do you have anything on, on the question to add to the question? You said that you are born in a Muslim family at the age, at the age of eight, your father has forced you and baptized you? Yes, uh, my, uh, my, my father's family is Christian and my, and my mom's family is Muslim. And now what do you think you are? Uh, <laughs> I'm afraid, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe I'm, st uh, I'm still Christian because I was baptized when I was young. Allah says in the Quran, there is no one who can baptize better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
Allah says in Surah Imran. There is no one who can baptize better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Islam, for anyone to be a Muslim, the only thing he has to accept is believe that there's one God who has got no image and there's no partner to God and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger and prophet of that almighty God. You don't have to take a dip in the water. You don't have to throw holy water. You don't have to tie a, th don't tie a sacred thread. If you believe in your heart these two things minimum, then you enter the fold of Islam. Sister, I would like to ask you that do you believe that there is one God? Sister, do you believe that there is one God? One God, yes. Do you believe there is one God or do you believe there are many gods? I don't believe many gods. I believe in Very one good. God. If in there my... is one God, if there is one God, I, I will only believe in one God. MashaAllah. I gave a talk. In my talk, I told you that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, what the Christians consider the God is totally wrong. And there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me. I am asking you, sister, do you believe Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, to be God or as a messenger of God? Yes, I watch your, I already watch your video, doctor. Mashallah. In, in, so now after watching my video, after hearing my lecture today, do you consider Jesus, peace be upon him, to be God or a messenger of God? He's a human being. He's not a God. Mashallah. <laughs> but he is of a higher caliber of human being. We consider him to be the messenger of God. Okay. Sister, I'm asking you, do you consider Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to be a messenger of God? Um, I have, you, you have to answer my questions first. Yeah, what's your question, sister? That's what I asked you. What's your question? Uh, the, uh, the main idea why did God, why God creates everything. That's it. The main my, question. My friend, my, friend said, my friend told me uh, he needs us to worship him and then it and why? Why God needs us to worship him? Sister asked a very good question. Why has God created us? Friend said to worship. Why does Almighty God want us to worship him? Now the question is more clear. First the question was why did God create? Now she's asking why does God Sorry. want us to give a very good question. Because it's connected to me. Very connected. First I will tell the purpose of creation then I'll come to your answer. Then I'll come to inshallah question. What is the purpose of a creation? Allah says in the Quran in Surah Dariya, chapter 51, verse number 56, Allah has created the men and the jinn not but to worship him. The main reason for Allah to create the human beings is to worship him. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Mul, chapter number 16, verse number 2, it's Allah who has created death and life to test which of us in good in deeds. You know, we have come in this world. How many of us have thought, why are we there in this world? For what? Why are we there in this world? And I've given a speech on the purpose of creation. It's a two-hour speech with the question and session four hours, time will not permit me. You know, many people keep on following the wave or following the herd without knowing why they're doing it. I'll give you a couple of examples. Once, the neighbor's dog was following the car. You know, you normally see when a car goes by, the dog barks and chases the car. So the neighbor told his neighbor that I wonder whether the dog will ever catch up with the car. So his neighbor replied, 
even if the dog catches up with the car what will he do what will he do after he catches up with the car you ask the people what are you doing i'm going to college which stream i have taken science why have you taken science because my friends have taken what will you do after you finish your bachelor of science i don't know herd mentality what is the purpose of your life to buy a house and then what okay i have children how big house will you buy depending upon the job i get depending on what i earn so what is the purpose of life is very important so many people some people they are family centered maybe wife centered maybe son centered i want to educate my son in what i want to send him to america for what i mean for what and after he does goes to america what will he do so many people they are just following the herd without knowing why they are doing it majority of the students you ask why you are choosing this it may end up finally to earn a living <clears throat> okay after earning a living what will you do what is the main purpose of life what is the success in your life some people think success in life is to earn money some people think success in life is to get a degree high degree some people think success in life is to gain popularity some people think success in life is to get a position principal maybe rector maybe president prime minister of a country president of a country is this success what is success Allah says in the Quran in surah al-asr chapter number 103 verse number 1 to 3 wal as Allah is taking a promise of time Allah is taking an oath wal as by the token of time innal insana lafi khus verily man is in loss illa alladhina amanu except those who have faith wa amilu salihat except those who have righteous deed wa tawassaw bil haqq those who invite people to truth those who do dawa watawasaw bi sabr those who invite people to patience and perseverance success is not the wealth you earn success is not the house you own success is not the car you have success is not the popularity you have that i have got on my facebook you know 16 million that is not success success is not the position you hold in the school or college or university or in a city or in a country whether you become a minister whether you become a prime minister whether you become a president success is iman belief success is amal salihat doing righteous deed success is doing dawa conveying the message of islam to the others success is inviting people to truth this is the surah al asr revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and account, according to Imam Shafi'i he said only if this surah was revealed surah al-asr it would have been sufficient as a guidance to humanity coming to your question sister why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want us to worship him we believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest It's a very good question, very intelligent question, very logical question. Why does Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala want us to praise Him? Why does Allah want us to pray? Why? Why worship Him? Why? I want you to tell. I want to tell you very clearly. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is the greatest. Whether anyone praises Him or not, whether we say thousand times Allah Wa Akbar, will that make Allah greater? no he is already the greatest whether you abuse allah will he become low he is already the greatest irrespective what you and i say it will not make an iota of difference to allah subhanahu wa taala 
he is the greatest he will remain the greatest allahu akbar then why does he want us to say allahu akbar very good question the reason allah wants us to praise him or pray the english word pray actually means to beseech to ask for help in our salah we don't only pray we don't only ask for help in a salah besides asking for help we even praise allah and we get guidance in our salah why does allah want us to praise him because it is the human nature he's our creator he knows us i'm asking you a simple question sister suppose your mother has a heart attack suppose your mother has a heart attack and you want to go for guidance and if there is a human being who's not a doctor the second person he's a mbbs doctor the third person he's a very famous heart specialist very famous well known and all of them are available to you who will you approach the non doctor a simple mbbs doctor or the famous heart specialist a special uh, heart specialist famous heart specialist why <laughs> because my mother's got a heart attack and Correct. Heart she's attack. got a heart attack you will go to a person who's famous and who's a heart specialist so in our salah when we say allahu akbar we are praising allah not because he becomes greater because when we praise him we also tend to follow him we say he is al hakim most wise ar rahim most merciful allah akbar most greatest so we are praising him see surah fatiha is called as ummul quran the mother of the quran it has seven verses the first few verses are praising alhamdulillah he rabbil alamin praise be to allah the lord of the worlds ar rahman ar rahim the most gracious most merciful malik yawm ad-din the master of the day of judgment three verses first three verses praising him Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin ar rahman ar rahim malik yawm ad-din praise be to allah the lord of the worlds most gracious most merciful the master of the day of judgment first three verses praising him iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in the alone we worship the alone we ask for help then ihdina as-sirat al-mustaqim show us the straight path sirat al-ladhina an'amta alayhim ghayr al-maghdubi alayhim wal dhalin the path of those who have earned thy favor not the path who have gone astray surah fatiha is the best example first three verse we praise him why do we praise him when we praise him he is al hakim most wise allah akbar most great so now when we say he is the most wise if we want guidance who will we go to to a cobbler to a barber who will we go to sister to the most wise so we are praising him because once we praise him and we agree the greatest he is the most wise he is the most knowledgeable we will go to him for guidance surah fatiha is the best example first three verses we praise him then we say he is the malik yawm ad-din the fourth verse also praising him master of the day of judgment the fifth sixth seventh verse is the sirat al-mustaqim show us the straight path the answer comes sirat al-ladhina an'amta alayhim ghayr al-maktubi alayhim wal dhalin the path of those who have earned and favor not the path of those who have gone astray this is the first chapter of the quran and the balance 113 chapters of the quran we are getting guidance surah baqara surah imran surah nisa surah maida surah anam surah araf surah anfal surah tauba surah yunus all getting guidance 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 we praise allah so that we as human beings the person you praise you want to go and take guidance from him. when we say he's the best heart specialist we'll go to heart specialist if you have a heart problem <clears throat> so allah wants us to praise him or pray him not to benefit him 
Even if the full world knows Billah curses him, it will not make an out of a difference to Allah. He is the greatest, he will remain the greatest. He is telling us for our benefit, we are undergoing a test. If we praise him, if we worship him, then we will start following his advice. What does he give advice? You know, when we offer salah, in every rakat, the imam recites Surah Fatiha. After Surah Fatiha, he gives guidance. He may recite Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 90, which says, Ya you ladhina amunu, oh you believe, inna mal khamru wal maithuru, most certainly intoxicants and gambling, wal anzabu wal aslamu, dedication of stones, divination of arrows, rishtam minamali shaitan, these are certain handiwork, fashtanibu lalukum tuflihun. Abstain from this handiwork that may prosper. Here we are getting guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, that don't have alcohol. Don't gamble. Don't do idol worship. Divination of stones. These are Satan's handiwork. Abstain from him. Now, once we praise him, and then if he says, don't have alcohol, then you stop having alcohol. We praise him, we worship him for our benefit. Allah says in Surah Anfal chapter 8, Allah does not require you. Allah is independent of all his creatures. It is we who require him. So Allah is asking us to praise him, to pray for him, not for his benefit, sister. For our benefit. Because Allah is our creator. He has created us. He knows how the human psychology works. Hope this answers your sister. Hope this answers your question, sister. Allah is asking us to pray for him and pray to him and praise him because once we pray and praise, we start believing his guidance. And the Quran is the guidance how a human light should be led in this world. As Allah says in Surah Mul chapter 6 and verse number 2, Allah khalaq al mauta wal hayata. It's Allah who has created death and life to test which of you is good indeed. We are undergoing a test, sister. Hope that answers the question, sister. Can I have always, please put on the screen the frame of the questioner. I would request the technical people. On the left screen, if it's a lady asking a question, on the right screen, if it's a gent. Can you put on the left screen, the sisters, camera please. The technical person, can you put? Yes, sister. Yes, sister. Do you agree now why does Allah want us to praise him and pray for him? Okay, you said that it's not for God's benefit. Correct. Then uh, it's not for his ego. Not at uh, all. Okay. Then why he will punish us if he will punish us if we uh, if we don't worship him? That's a very good question. Because he already did for us. He don't need us. Uh, it's not for his benefit, then why will he punish us? Very good question, sister. Very good question. Sister, I would like to give an example. Now, the example is that suppose you own a company. Sister, you own a company, correct? Sister, are you listening to me? Yes. Why are you changing on the screen? The technical people, why are you changing the screen? On the left screen, keep the sister's camera. The technical people, yes, please don't change it. You know, some people have the habit of fidgeting. These technical people, fidgeting. Please don't change it. Keep left, sisters, right, brothers, always, no problem. Sister, suppose you own a company, correct? And you have many employees. You have every month, you're giving them salary. And to one person, you are giving a salary of 10 million rupees, 100 million rupees every month. And he does not follow your advice. He doesn't consider you to be boss. He goes to the other company 
and he works for them. He works for the other company. He does not come to your office, maybe once a month he comes, only to take salary. The remaining time he's supposed to come from morning 8 o'clock to 6 o'clock. He doesn't come. He goes to the next company. And to the next company, he is working there. You are giving him salary, he is working there. I am asking you the question. When the time for salary comes, will you give him bonus? No. Why? Because he works in another company. But you are paying him salary. Because he's working in another company. So Almighty God created you. You are going and washing somebody else. Allah created you. Allah gave you life. Allah gave you this health. Allah gave you the wealth. Allah gave you the house. And you want to worship somebody else. To him, it will make no difference. He's Rahman or Rahim. But he knows, okay, not worshipping him. Then what you're not worshipping him is one thing. You are not following his advice. He's saying, don't have alcohol. You're having alcohol. So when he has created you, he's guiding you. If you have alcohol, there is more loss, less profit. If you do shirk, you're worshipping somebody else. So if you worship somebody else, he is giving you everything. He is giving you monthly salary. What will you do? Will you kick him out of the job or not? Yes or no? Will you kick him out of the job or not? Oh yes, I will. Why? Why are you so cruel, sister? And if I call you cruel, is it correct? If I say you are so cruel, you are so cruel, you are so unjust, just because he's working somebody else, you continue paying him salary, what is the problem? No, I'm not cruel. Same way, Almighty God is also not cruel. Many people he gives you, even if you go, if you come back, if you work somebody else, if you come back, suppose you work for 10 years somebody else, for 10 years, when you come back, Allah says he forgives all your sins. He gives you all 10 years salary. No problem. You come back to me, no problem. Will you do that? I will. If suppose someone works 10 years and he comes back to you, will you give all the balance 10 years salary? No human being will give. Will you give? No. Because we are not most merciful. We are not most kind. We may be kind, little bit kind. Correct? But 10 years he works somewhere else, 10 years multiplied by 12, 120 months salary. If I'm paying 100 million, I'll have to pay how much? I'll have to pay 1.12 billion. Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most kind. The reason he asked us to praise him, because it will benefit us. If you make mistakes and you come back to the true part, Allah says, I forgive all your previous mistakes. That there is in a non-Muslim. When he becomes a Muslim, Allah says, he forgives all his past sins. All his past sins forgiven. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this life sister is a test for the hereafter. The other, hum the other creatures that Allah created, the trees, the mountains, they have no free will of their own. We human beings, sister, have a free will. To the other creations, all of them will pass, maybe second class. Allah asked us, this mentioned in Surah Furqan, chapter 25, who would like to undergo this test? If Allah gives you a free will, and then if you obey Allah, you become higher than the angels. Because after free will you obey, the angels have got no free will. They will obey Allah 100 percent. They cannot object. They cannot disobey. We human beings have been given the power to obey or disobey. Now when we have given this power, you can either get first class or distinction. You can even fail. So Allah asked us, who would want to undergo the test? The Quran says in Surah Furqan, we human beings were the fool, you and I. Who said we want to undergo this test? We want to get distinction. So now we are undergoing this test. Do you understand, sister? The other creatures, all of them, the Quran says the mountain was afraid. 
we said no no we don't want second class we want distinction so now to get distinction we have come in this world but in the examination everyone doesn't pass those who follow the rules and regulation they pass those who don't follow rules and regulation we fail so this test is this life sister is a test for the hereafter you and i are undergoing the test and the rules and regulation for this test is the quran and in this quran allah is helping us how to pass this test if we follow this quran and the say hadith inshallah you will get distinction if you don't follow this quran then you will fail the test and the first criteria to enter the school of islam is to believe that there is one god and believe prophet muhammad is the messenger of god sister hope that answer your question regarding why does allah want us to praise him why does allah want us to worship him yes hope you are satisfied satisfied enough sister do you believe there is one god if there is one god there must be only one god correct do you believe that prophet muhammad is the messenger of god i do yes yes i do mashallah so that means according to me you are a muslim maybe your father baptized you and you were influenced but now i believe if you believe there is one god and you believe prophet muhammad is the messenger you enter the nursery inshallah the more you practice you may enter first standard second standard then you will pass the school then graduate post graduate inshallah phd but the minimum criteria for any human being to accept islam is believe there is one god and believe prophet muhammad is the messenger which you have believed sister would you like to say it in arabic would you like to say it in arabic what's that same thing that there's one god and prophet muhammad is the messenger would you like if i say it in arabic would you repeat it so you will make my baptize cancel okay as i told you sister in islam you have to be whatever you are even if you do shirk even if you believe that jesus was god knows billa if you did idol worship the moment you believe from today from now onwards all your sin is cancelled not only baptizing sin all shirk you did is cancelled if you did murder also knows billa i know most probably you have not done whatever sin you do the moment you accept islam all your past sins are forgiven and cancelled Would you like to say it? Okay. Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? No one. Are you doing it of your own free will? Yes, I would like to know all my my questioning mind. You are most welcome. First, take entry into nursery. You said by again nursery, give me doctorate degree. No, first nursery, then first standard, then second standard, then ten standard, then graduation, then post graduation. So I hope and so no one is no one is forcing you sister no one okay inshallah i said in arabic and you can repeat it ashhadu ashhadu allah allah ilaha ilaha illallah illallah wa ashhadu wa ashhadu anna anna muhammadan muhammadan abduhu abduhu wa rasuluhu wa rasuluhu takbir takbir allah akbar takbir takbir sister i said in english again i bear witness i bear witness that that there is no god but allah there is no god but allah and and prophet muhammad prophet muhammad peace be upon him peace be upon him is the messenger if is the messenger and servant of allah and servants of allah mashallah sister may allah subhanahu wa taala inshallah allah will forgive all your sins and i pray to allah subhanahu wa taala may he give you more hidayah may he give you more guidance so that besides you you are able to get your family to the true path your friends also and i pray to allah subhanahu wa taala to forgive all your sins and put you in jannah inshallah 
I would request our Muslim brothers and sisters, whenever a non-Muslim accepts Islam, you welcome him or her with open arms. It's our duty to give guidance to those people who accept Islam. It's our duty to support them. It's our duty to help them. And inshallah, sister, if you want any more knowledge, you're most welcome to take guidance from this university. I'm sure this university may be having a department where they give guidance. If they don't have, I request the University of Darul Salaam in Gontor to make a special department for reverts. It's my request. It's my humble request. Make a separate department, a separate cell called at reverts organization so that they will feel comfortable and we'll help them so that they feel comfortable and they become stronger in this faith, inshallah. Then we have the next question.